let's make sure we're all up on the node interface where it is in Lightwave and the most basic operating parts of it. Most often you'll see it like this an edit nodes button that takes you into the nodal interface. In some instances, like here in Surface Editor, there's a checkbox next to it. This basically switches the nodes on and off. So you can have networks stored in here but disable them for whatever it is that you've set up. Otherwise our basic node editor panes will appear like this. You can access your nodes over here on the left, depending of course on your Lightwave version. Here in 11 we've got handy just drop downs to pick them off as well as a search otherwise you'll be using the main menu drop down. You've also got your little edit menu that applies to nodes that you have selected but that's also available via right click either in the space or on a given node itself. View options for the node editor as well as a little update to update anything that's going on in here. Undo redo and a purge to clear the undo history. Zoom and pan controls and the pop out which when you use it allows you to have a node's properties just straight there by selecting it rather than having to double click the node without it and get a floating panel. You can also add down here at the bottom little notes on a node by node basis to leave yourself comments for what a given node is doing and similar. Otherwise your nodes have all of their connections. You have the inputs on the left and the outputs on the right which plug up to one another and that's it. Of course, talking in terms of the nodal concept there, this is analogous to having an input field somewhere where you would normally enter a number or whatever else, and this essentially is the input that you're typing into it, as it were, or the option that you're selecting. Nodes can also be collapsed by the little arrow switches here, or expanded of course, which shrinks them up and makes your node flow a little bit tidier, especially when you've got multiple nodes in here. You can't grab connections, of course, from a collapse node. You can, however, connect into a collapse node, simply drag over until the arrow snaps, and when you release, you get a little menu for which connection you wish to connect into. You can also right-click on the image of any node, and you'll see that different ones have different preview options to let you see different features of the node settings there. You can also select nodes either single ones, blocks or entire networks and do an export selected which saves them as a nodes file type. You're then able with the import nodes option to import node networks essentially allowing you to save network presets for when you make setups that you wish to reuse later. The other thing to remember about nodes and their connections is of course the execution order. Nodes, their settings and adjustments are applied in sequence and of course data travels down following the arrows. This of course means that when you have nodes splitting off in different directions, each direction represents its own chain of calculations if you like. Things will not cross over between chains unless they are somehow further connected up to make the data go through them the way that is required. Each type of node panel will have its own destination node, which obviously can't be removed or deleted. These are the final inputs to the place where the node editor has been called from. Sometimes, for instance, here in Surface Editor, we'll notice that I can still adjust all of the parameters there as I normally would with layered textures and whatnot. But once I start plugging values in via the node editor, with nodes enabled, those options become greyed out. As for the different types of node editor, we'll find it in a fair few places throughout Lightwave. For instance, of course, as we've already seen here, the surface node editor. We also have the texture node editor. Anywhere that there's a T button in Lightwave, to just call a regular old layered texture, we can, either natively or via plugins, depending upon the version we've got, go to a procedural texture and choose a node editor wherein we get a node editor that lets us drive that particular texture channel. And of course its inputs will reflect what it was, in this case a color texture layer. Should I do the same here for a bump layer, then of course I get a vector input in my destination node. Of course it can get really weird at this stage if you want, especially when we have things like layer nodes, which means that you can take a layer in nodal and connect it up via the layered editor or alternatively, if we were using the nodal texture, we could bring in a layer which we could drive with yet another node panel. So you can really layer up your nodal networks as well in this sort of fashion in some places, which is kind of unusual, but also potentially useful. 
Other places that we have Node Editor available now include Motion Options, where there is a Motion Modifier, again native or plug-in for nodal motion, which allows us to use node networks to drive position, rotation and scale. Notice that there is an After IK option allowing nodal motion to work either before or after IK. The plugin is the Dpont version Node Item Motion, which is basically the same, except it allows you per channel input and allows the storing of presets as well. To get the per channel input on the regular motion node editor, you'd need to wire up a make vector node, which then gives you the three channels for that attribute. It's also available motion wise, again thanks to Dpont, via the node channel filter. Again, just like node item motion, the difference being that the destination node is just a single scalar. It is this one particular channel, so the X or the Y or the Z or whichever channel we happen to have applied the channel filter to. That means that we can use nodal motion on things that do not have a motion options panel or basically anywhere where there's an envelope. So basically we can have nodal access anywhere where there's a texture button T or an envelope button E. Of course there's dedicated panels still in further places like the instance generator as well as of course the DP instancer that let us use node networks to mix up the properties of each individual instance. There's fiber effects that has a node panel which allows you both surface shading as well as other attributes like length and there it is, that is basically the overview of the nodal interface, where you'll find it, how to navigate it, and so on.